Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, which is all about income-oriented investing. And once again, it's time to unveil my entire portfolio to you from A to Z. That's right, it's that time of the month again. It's time for your favorite video. So if you're watching this portfolio unveil video, make sure you're watching the latest one because I do them every month. This is video update number 21 for January 2023. And I actually have a YouTube playlist uh, dedicated to all my portfolio vi videos. So they're all there in chronological order if you want to check them out. So in case you're new to the channel, welcome. A quick note on my investing style. I am a long-term buy and hold income-focused or income-oriented investor. And the primary objective is really to generate high and consistent passive income via dividends every single month as safely as possible. So most, if not all my returns, everyone, does not come from stock price increase or capital appreciation, but it comes from the passive income that my portfolio generates on a monthly basis. So how do I achieve this? Well, my portfolio primarily holds or invests in funds that hold blue chip dividend stocks or even indexes and that use income enhancing strategies like leverage, like covered calls, and sometimes and most of the time a combination of the two. So they provide fairly consistent passive income and the intent is really to hold them long term. Uh, not to sell them later on uh, at a profit, but simply to collect the passive income forever. So what will I show you exactly in this video? Well, I will quickly show you an overview of my six investing accounts using a little tool called Passive, a nice little portfolio tracking software that consolidates all the accounts together. This is just to show you that the numbers in my thumbnail are correct and I'm not pulling your leg here. So it's much easier to digest all within passive. After that, I will digest or go through my portfolio in Excel spreadsheet so you could see all my individual holdings. We'll go through them one by one. You'll be able to see my book prices. I unveil and I'm 100% completely honest and transparent in these videos. I know you guys appreciate it. So we'll go through everything in Excel spreadsheets. And by the way, you could download the Excel spreadsheet that I'm about to unveil for free on my website, passiveincomeinvesting.ca. Just go to the top and click on free tools and resources and it will be the very first download. Another thing, is I'm not going to go into detail about my portfolio tracking and strategy and taxes and things like that because I really want to focus on the holdings and you know what changes I've made or what I bought this month so for you know my portfolio explained if you're in case you're new to the channel I actually made a video called my portfolio explained so uh, look for that video you could just search for it or it should be flashing on your screen right now so without further ado let's check out the entire portfolio together I'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Hamilton ETFs, the creator of the very first enhanced all-in-one covered call ETF. Of course, I'm talking about HDIV, uh, which is currently beating the TSX 60 or the overall Canadian market by over 4%. So it's doing very, very well. They also have a US equivalent, HYLD, which is also another enhanced covered call or all-in-one covered call solution. And they have other enhanced ETFs as well, including HCAL, the top performing Canadian banks ETF. So make sure to check out their funds on their website, hamiltonetfs.com. All right, everyone, this is the consolidated data of my six investing accounts. So I am filming this on January 17th, 17th at 1 p.m. By the way, you could see the time there. So this is the overview. My total value is one million and seventy seven thousand dollars. And of course, we'll go through, you know, I know there was a big jump from last month. So the, the increase in stock prices obviously helps the value. Plus, I invested quite a bit in the last since the last portfolio unveiled. So we'll see that in a second here. So, of course, like you know, I separate uh, my portfolio or this video in two separate entities. I have my main portfolio, which consists of my TFSA, my wife's TFSA and our joint cash account. So this is the main portfolio. Total value is a little over six. 54,000 here. Of course, everything is in Canadian dollars. I won't show you the, the holdings here. We'll do that with the Excel file because it's much easier. So again, my main portfolio is my TFSA, my wife's TFSA and our joint cash account. And then you have the retirement accounts, which has a total value of a little over 420,000 here. And that is my wife's RSP, my RSP and a small uh, lira that I had back uh, from my Air Canada days. This is basically my Air Canada pension plan. So now let's go over the portfolio in detail from A to Z using the Excel files. And we're going to start with the retirement accounts and then we'll go to the main portfolio. 
All right, everyone, let's start with the retirement account. So this is a combination of my RSP, my wife's RSP, and my small Lira account. So in case you're new here, this is pretty much how I track everything. The first section is my RSP, then my wife's RSP, and then my small Lira. And um, you know these are the totals over here. So the total monthly income in Canadian dollars the three accounts combined is 5314 now there is a reduction from last month and the biggest contributing factor was the clm dividend cut i know somebody gave me crap last month for not updating it well uh, that was december and the clm the new clm dividend only started in january so as you can see here i did um, update the new annual dividend rate from two dollars and sixteen cents to one dollar and forty seven cents so that definitely dropped uh my income from uh, to about uh, 250 us dollars so quite significant but as you can see even with the cut i'm um, at 14 and percent yield so still very very high yield so let's go through the changes i made first before we go through the portfolio and accounts one by one so the big change i did was a uh, in my wife's rsp account i actually finally swapped out ryld into a more hyld.u mostly in hyld.u and a little bit more in qyld so in case you didn't know, my, my plan is actually to also swap out QYLD into HYLD.U because, you know, HYLD.U now has QYLD, RYLD, XYLD, and JEPI and JEPQ. So in my opinion, it's really the best way to capture the entire covered call, the five best covered call ETFs in America. And of course, I'm, you know, because I want everything mostly in US dollars here, the only, everything is in US dollars or US listed except for uh, my Lira account. I invested in hyld.u so hyld.u is it, it is canadian listed but it's in u.s uh currency so that's the major change i did uh my wife's account you know it's it's on drip so it just keeps increasing in units uh my little lira which only has the bitcoin actually started recovering a little bit finally you could see that i'm, I'm down 48 percent instead of 56 or 60 percent like last month so this is on you know these two accounts are on drip and then i have my rsp which is kind of my fun yolo account which i like to do some you know experiment with more funky high yield stuff which i don't suggest you follow um but my, my wife's account is more uh you know the the a mainstream or the more classic income or a safer one uh, if you will. So on my account, I just bought more HYGW, um, which I really like. It's 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 always impressing me because the, the yield is extremely high, 20% yield. It's a new iShares covered call fixed income ETF. Um, so yeah, I just adding more here and I'm pretty much going to go to $10,000 here to make everything nice and even because as you all know, I have some OCD. So let's just go through the holdings really quickly. So CLM, of course, big dividend cut for 2023. It's expected. It's just how it's designed. It's re it resets annually based on the NAF price on October 31st. So uh, still making over 14% yield. So I can't complain, but it did drop my income uh, significantly in my account. I have SFOL, one of my primary positions here. So my three primary positions in my RSP is CLM, SFOL, and CEFD. So uh, SVOL, I really, really like. Uh, it's very, very consistent. The December dividend was a little bit higher, which is typical uh, because uh, ETF companies need to pay out their unrealized gains at the end of every year. So I expect the January dividend to go back to 32 cents. And I did talk to uh, the creators of this fund or the fund manager of SVOL in a recent video. So make sure to check it out. Really love SVOL, very consistent 16, 17% yield. CEFD is an all in one closed end fund solution. So it's an index that tracks over 100 closed end funds on the US market. And on top of that, it has 50% leverage. So it's been chugging along, doing fine, fairly consistent dividends here. I'm at 13.4% yield, which I wish it could get higher. You know, my, my book price is 24 right now. The stock price is about 21. Uh, this is an ETN, however, not an ETF. So a little bit more uh, risk on that. And also from the same company, I do have BDCX, which is kind of is the same thing as CEFD, except it's for BDC. So this is where I get some BDC exposure, which is, uh, you know, popular in the U.S. There's not much of this in Canada. So again, my RSP, a little bit more funky, a little bit more on the U.S. market. I try to get stuff on the U.S. market that doesn't exist on the Canadian market. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I do put this all in my RSP because there is no 15% withholding tax on any income in uh, on U.S. stocks in the RSP. So CEFD, BDCX, my two ETNs from ETRAX, not really much to discuss 
no no surprises with the recent dividends. BDCX just announced their their uh, quarterly dividend. So uh, BDCX is actually the only stock in my all my accounts that's quarterly that pays out quarterly. Unfortunately, not monthly. But hey, what can you do? Next two are my two Credit Suisse ETNs. One is just silver. One is uh, oil. So finally, uh, the silver one has been pumping out a lot better dividends lately because you know with inflation, what happens? silver and gold precious metals go up so the silver one is doing really well really nice uh dividends lately bringing up my yield to almost 18 percent and since these ones are really funky the dividends vary greatly every month this is uh you know this annual dividend rate is just the average of the last three dividends okay for usoi and uh, slvo Next one is HYGW, the newest edition I did, and I added a couple more grand in here, and I'm just going to keep adding till I get to at least 10,000. I mean, uh, it surprises me every time. I think they declared their fourth or fifth dividend, very, very high. It's basically covered calls, 100% at the money covered calls on uh, the iShares corporate bond ETF. So this is actually a pretty decent way, the only decent way I found to get some good yield on fixed income. It just proves that covered calls is just amazing. You could put slap covered calls on anything and make money off of it. Just like the USOI and SLVO, I mean, you're, they're just doing covered calls on silver futures and oil futures. Absolutely amazing. But again, this is all funky, riskier stuff here. Not HY. I always, I always mispronounce it, HYGW, but I'm talking about more the, the silver and oil ETN. Then, of course, I got ORC, the, 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 the thorn in my spine. But hey, if you look at the last six months, ORC is finally starting to go up, everyone. And that is the power of holding something. Even though it's, I wouldn't buy something like ORC again, I wouldn't buy any single companies or single stocks anymore. But because ORC is technically a REIT, it has to pay out every month. So... This is where I keep saying, you know, the income is always a safety net. It's always a backup. And hey, I'm just collecting my hundred dollars every month for, you know, the the, the dividend's been sixteen cents um, for a while now since August and August 2021. So yes, I'm down like fifty percent on it or more. But hey, I'm still making a hundred dollars a month, which is just helping me. Plus, the stock price seems to be going back up. Um, so yeah, that's Orchid Island Capital, and then last but not least, I have the Ether. Uh, the Ether Yield ETF from Purpose, which writes covered calls on Ether, Ethereum, and I have the .U version or the US version. And both Ether and Bitcoin, I finally started to rally in, in 2023. Will it continue? I have no idea. Don't really care because I have it with covered calls. So I'm making a yield, you know, under 10%, but hopefully the, the dividends start going up and the yield will go up. So overall, my account, 14.21% yield, really, really nice. Um, and so far, I've contributed to my RSP 145, and my value as of this month is about 200,000. So I am up 37%. Of course, this is unrealized. It would only be, you know, the 37% profit would only be realized if I sold everything. But, you know, this is my RSP, guys. I don't withdraw any of the income. It's just growing, and I'm just reinvesting it manually every single month. My wife's RSP, we already discussed the changes, swapped RYLD into mostly HYLD.U and a little bit more in QYLD. It was actually a good decision because QYLD is starting to pick up again too, but I am eventually planning on swapping QYLD if into HYLD. I just don't know when. Whenever I feel like it, I'll, I'll just do it. Um, so yeah, besides that, there's Riv, which is the more moderate all-in-one closed-end fund solution compared to CEFD. So when I say all-in-one closed-end fund solution, by the way, it's, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of closed-end funds, which are typically income-oriented, they're leveraged, high fees actively managed on the U.S. market, Canadian market, there's not much, but I don't want to pick and choose closed-end funds, just like I don't want to pick and choose BDCs or want to pick and choose stocks. So I love the all-in-one option. So uh, Riv is your moderate closed-end fund all-in-one option. It's basically a closed-end fund fund that picks and chooses other closed-end funds, and they try to get the ones that trade at discounts. Really, really cool. Then there's RA. RA is a single closed-end fund, but for me, it's quite defensive, quite boring because it's from Brookfield and it's all real assets. So it's real estate, infrastructure, natural resources, uh, corporate debt, and stocks as well. And I just couldn't be happier this one. This one, the dividend's been the same forever. And, you know, my wife's account is just dripping away. So uh, I am up or we are up 33% unrealized on this account here. And then you have my little lira, which just has Bitcoin. 
a yield. I just YOLO'd it. Half of this money was from Air Canada. The other half was from my paycheck. So I just decided it. I just went YOLO or FOMO into Bitcoin. Unfortunately, bad timing, but it's finally starting to pick up. And every month, the, the you know it's just dripping away. So total, all three accounts combined, uh, converted to Canadian with this exchange rate here, 134, is about 53 hundred dollars a month so this is it for my three retirement accounts now let's go to the main portfolio which is what i used to basically live off of uh which is the two tfsas and cash account all right main portfolio which is all in the canadian stock market got a lot of this to discuss this month i made a lot of changes so our uh, not much changes but a lot of additions but some changes too so of course let's go to the main portfolio tracker and again guys if it's too small you can't see you could download the excel sheet on my website so you could follow along and it also includes a blank portfolio template by the way if you need a template uh, and you like mine so main portfolio tracker so let's go it back to december of 2022 because i made some changes last uh, portfolio unveil video that i did in december the only thing i showed you was i put 5k in ftn but i did sell off my pwy from brompton and swap that into some bmax um hyld and more rs so pwy you know it, it's the real asset split share fund from brompton i wanted to get the new all-in-one bmax so i i, I figured i swapped some into it and then I, I got some hyld and rs to prop up my yield because i did take a uh, a small loss when selling off pwy and you know if you follow me on blossom by the way you will already known that i sold off pwy and swapped it into bmax etc so in case you didn't download the app there's a mobile app called blossom that you could download and everyone could share their portfolio it's like a it is only for canadians it's like a social investing app and i am there so click on the video description below and it's the very first uh, thing I write there, you can follow me on Blossom. The link is there. Use my link to download the application for free on your phones and, and follow me. Follow me on Blossom so you could see the changes that I've made. Anyway, ongoing. Also, what I did is I trimmed DFN a little bit. This is actually, I, I like to dedicate this streamline or this swap to Nick uh, Hendrick on, on our Facebook group. So he had a great idea to. Uh, you know, since DFN has been really doing well lately, he basically got rid of it, I believe, and swapped it into HYLD. So I, I figured the same, you know, reduce a little bit the split share fund exposure, go into more of an all-in-one ETF. So I slightly reduced my DFN exposure and swapped it into HYLD. So that's it for December. Those are the final moves uh, for 2022. And then just this month, actually, I did most of these trades today, believe it or not, or in the last couple of weeks, I invested uh, quite heavily more in HDIV, HDIV, HYLD, which are three of uh, my primary positions, all in one covered call ETFs. You see some pretty big, big investments here. And I also put 5K in the new Tesla yield share ETF from Purpose, which I do have an upcoming video on. I'm probably gonna do a collaboration with Purpose ETFs. I'm gonna uh, you know, do a Q&A with them. I can't wait for that. So really, really cool. And I actually got a good timing for once in my life on the Tesla shares. And I think I'm already up like 20, 15, 20%, which I'll show you in a second. So this is the changes that I've made recently from last month, everyone. Now let's go through the entire portfolio from A to Z. I have 16 holdings now, and we'll go through them one by one, and then I'll explain to you uh, the total. So the first four of or are, of course, four key primary positions in my portfolio. They're, they are the all-in-one covered call ETF solutions, with, which have a little bit of leverage. So HYLD, my biggest position by far at 20%, over 20% of my portfolio, uh, which is probably my favorite holding. I mean, it, they have the five best covered call ETFs uh, listed on the US, QYLD, RYLD, XYLD, and now they have JEPI and JEPQ. They also have a bit of gold, a bit of healthcare, and a tad, tad bit of energy. So I think it's pretty much along the lines of perfect. And, uh, you know, I have over 10,000 shares now. My book price is when I, I'm, I'm keep, I keep on buying. So my book price is going down and down, but it's still much higher than what it's trading for right now. But it's at 1430. So I have a 11.75% yield. But if you would buy it today, the yield is over. It's about 13 and a half or more. So I'm, I'm just a dollar cost averaging down HYLD. I don't, you know, I see myself buying a little bit of HYLD every single month. Uh, going forward. HDIV, I did add a little bit there. I did average down a little bit. I'm making just under 9%. I would love to have the 9%, but 8.85 for HDIV 
is really good. So this one has six covered call ETFs plus one leveraged ETF that would be HFIN without the covered call. So um, HYLD really focuses on the US where HDIV is more in Canada. So 50K here now and HDIF, I did add a lot to HDIF as well. This is the Harvest all-in-one covered call ETF that has 25% leverage. So you're looking at the six, a combination of the six most popular uh, covered call ETFs from Harvest. So healthcare brands, technology, utilities, US banks, and now HDIF. So it has some Canadian uh, exposure. So HDIF is about 75% US, 25% Canada. And I'm happy to say that I averaged down to 938. So I passed 9% yield finally. Very happy about that with a cool even 8,000 shares and 75,000 um, total invested, which is my second highest position in, in a tie with RS, which we'll go through in a second. Then there's BMAX. Um, didn't add didn't add to it. So BMAX is Brompton's all in one. Um, it, it, just like the other three, it does have um, you know a combination of Brompton covered call ETF. So it, it's very similar to HDIF because it's just Brompton products all together um, with 33% leverage. So that's the difference. There's a little bit more leverage on this one, but the assets inside are definitely more conservative in my opinion because there's only 70% in equity and 30% is actually in fixed income. So in terms of assets, it's a lot safer um, compared to HDIF, HDIF, and HYLD where it's 100% equity. But I only have a 10K in here. Uh, not looking to add more anytime soon, but hey, maybe I'll do another swap uh, into BMAX. We'll see. Then I have my two crypto covered call ETFs, which my objective, personal objective is never to have more than 10% overall. And right now I do have a tad bit more than 10%, 10.26 that you could see here that that's why that objective is in orange or in yellow. Um, but I, you know, eventually it will reduce under 10%. And hey, finally, these guys are going up. Uh, but I'm still down pretty much 50% on them. You could see my book prices here. Um, and this is pretty much the biggest contributor to my, you know, my portfolio value being down compared to my book cost, which is narrowing. I'm only down 5.42%, which is pretty much nothing. I don't really care. But the biggest contributor by far is the crypto ETS. But hey, maybe by next month or six months, they could be back uh, at these prices. We don't know. So this is why I like the covered call. So this is just Bitcoin and Ether with covered calls. You get paid monthly uh, and, you know, they're definitely my, my poorest performers, by far my lowest yields. But hopefully they, they start going back up and the income starts going back up as well. Here's a new position here, new ETF, which is the Tesla yield shares ETF. So it's an ETF that holds only Tesla stock, 25% leverage, and they write covered calls on 50%. Of the portfolio so you still have tesla upside when tesla goes up but you got massive massive income and this is just based on the first dividend 26 percent yield so i know this is pretty crazy my book price is 14 dollars. i think right now it's at 16 dollars. so i got a nice profit even though that doesn't make a difference to me because i just buy and hold but um we'll see what the next dividends are and just like the the crypto ones this annual dividend rate is going to be the average of the last three dividends so it'll be more accurate in a few months once the newer dividends come out so that's it for my my etfs everyone they have now passed my closed end funds in terms of portfolio coverage so i have 51 percent in etfs 48 a little over uh, just under 49 percent in closed end funds uh in case you're wondering i am going more towards uh focusing more on the etfs on especially these four, the all-in-one covered call ETFs. Uh, just these four make up 40% now of my entire portfolio. So now let's go over the closed end funds, which of course include the split funds, but EIT is not a split fund and this makes up 7.96% of my portfolio. It, it, it's just chugging along everyone. I have a really low book price of 1065. The, the stock is almost at $14. This, in my opinion, is really the big, big winner of 2022. The main reason is because it does not have any tech exposure. It just has a lot of financials, healthcare uh, materials as well. So. Awesome, awesome closed end fund here, guys. That's just chugging along. I'm making a nice yield on it. Definitely one of my OG. So I would say that, you know, between these four plus EIT and RS, which takes care of my real estate exposure, these are my my big, uh, my big six. These are my big six positions. You could even add GDV in there. So these one, two, three, four, five, six. These seven positions literally make up 68% 
of my portfolio. So now moving on to the split share funds, you have DFN, which I trimmed from 35,000 to 25,000, uh, simply because I was, you know, I, I sold a little bit, uh, I didn't make a loss, I didn't make a gain on it, I was broken even on it, and now I'm actually I'm in the green on DFN because it's over 779, which is my book price. So um, yeah, I just decided to do it because you know I had I did have a, a lot in DFN. It is, I wouldn't say a super risky split fund, but it could miss dividends. So I just trimmed it to 25 to make it in line with my other uh, split share funds that I consider uh, medium risk. I have FTN, which I recently added 5K to. I averaged down to 12.79, so I'm, I'm still down on FTN uh, because of the uh, you know the consolidation where I, in December 2020 where I lost 60% of my shares. But I think this one is is in a fairly good position now. The unit nav is well over $15. It's almost at 18, so I don't foresee missing any uh, dividends yet. And by the way, you know if, in case you're new here, you could click on here and. I have the details of you know the split share fund distributions here. When the first one came out, how many distributions the fund missed or the split share fund missed, and how many distributions I personally missed at the bottom. So if it's orange, it means I missed dividends. If it's green, it means I never missed any dividends, the green ones here. So that's DFN and FTN from Quadrivest. I both, you know, I have 25K in each now. Then you have the finan my financial specific ones from Brompton, LBS, and SBC, which have been doing phenomenal. I am up significantly on both of them, making phenomenal yields. Uh, I, I mean, what could I say? Canadian financials, guys, they're, they're just the powerhouse of the Canadian stock market. So LBS is the six big banks and four life insurance companies, whereas SBC is... Uh, the big, just just the six banks, really doing phenomenal on them. DGS, I got 20K, uh, which is basically very similar to DFN. It's your diversified Canadian portfolio. So very similar to DFN, except there's a lot more stocks. And this one always flirts with the $15 unit nav. So, you know, you got to expect to miss dividends. I missed two dividends in uh, 2022. Um, but, you know, D DGS does miss quite a few dividends. Um, but the trade-off is you get really, really high yield. I actually calculated this the other day. What if I miss two dividends every single year? The yield, my yield will still be 15% or over 15%. So you got to expect it, everyone. Um, so yeah, that's DGS. And I'm actually, my book price is actually very, very close to the market price. It's been going up. Then there's GDV, which I feel is, you know, my biggest holding in terms of split fund at 65K, 9.44% of my portfolio. I feel this is the most diversified and well-balanced split share fund ever. It's 40 plus of the best blue chip global dividend growth stocks. So it's the best dividend, some of the best dividend growth stocks all over the world. Um, I'm very close, you know, it's almost at $11. I think it might even pass the $11. I'm at 1134. Uh, never missed a dividend. I don't think it will ever miss a dividend. Definitely one of my favorite holdings. And this is the one where I'm contemplating guys to maybe reduce some of it and swap it into BMAX, which makes complete sense because basically GDV is inside BMAX already. So if you look at what's inside BMAX, there's an ETF called BDIV, which is basically a replicate or uh, the duplicate of GDV, except it's just a regular covered call ETF, the best global dividend growth stock. So I might be swapping some GDV into BMAX eventually. When and how much, I don't really know. We'll, we'll, I'll let you guys know. Uh, of course, you'll see it when I do. And then last but not least, the two split share funds that are, in my opinion, some of the best managed. They never miss dividends ever. ENS, which is just Enbridge. So very similar to YTSL, except it's a split fund. So, uh, you know, the, the, if Enbridge keeps raising their dividend, this is just keeps getting more and more safe. Um, I, I couldn't be happier with, with ENS. I have pretty big position, almost 31K, 4.5% uh, of my portfolio. I'm making 11.72% yield on basically Enbridge stock, which is awesome. And you know, I, I am up on it as well. It's at 15 and my book price is 1331. And then there's RS, one of my six primary positions in my portfolio. And this is where I get my real estate exposure. So this is a split share fund that has a collection of the best blue, blue chip, big cap REITs in Canada. So we're talking smart centers, Rio Can, uh, Granite, Killam Apartment Read, Canadian Apartment Read. So it has a lot of retail, residential, uh, medical, commercial. It has it has basically diversified real estate in Canada. And it's a it's at a good price. I did add some more recently. So I'm at 75,000. So it's a second biggest position tied with HDIF. 
uh, and it's at 10.86. So I, you know, an objective I have for my portfolio, you could actually see it here, at least 10% overall in real estate. So I have 10 point, you know, 86 plus, you know, there's a tiny bit of real estate maybe in BMAX and H diff and maybe a couple of other ones, maybe maybe GTV has a tiny bit, but most of everything doesn't have any real estate. So this is why I have RS for my personal real estate needs. So I am over 10%, so this is why it's green. And my other objective, as you could see there, over 10% yield, which now we will go through the, um, the numbers together. So I am overall, I'm making 10.81% yield. So I am up from last month, I believe, with all the HYLD and HDIF that I bought where I averaged down. Uh, also putting 5K in this really helped prop up my yield. So my monthly income is now 6234. Uh, so I finally passed 6,000 again just under 75,000 a year, which equates to 62.34. So I couldn't be happier about this. You see the breakdown here. So now ETFs have surpassed closed end funds in terms of portfolio percentage. So let's go through the numbers, everyone. Overall portfolio book cost or average cost base. This is basically how much money I invested total. It's all my book, book prices uh, together, right? Total invested together. So that's 692 my portfolio's value like i showed you in passive of my main portfolio is about 655 it's 654 and a half so overall i'm only down 5.42 percent if i would sell everything tomorrow i would make five you know 654 uh so i'm only down 5.42 percent and again the biggest contributor to this like 85 to 95 percent of the, the loss is because of the two crypto ones if these guys catch up I will definitely be in the green. Plus, if the market keeps going up in 2023, I will definitely go back in the green. But either way, like I keep saying, this is, I don't care because I'm just buying and holding. I, I don't intend to really sell. And yes, I might streamline and swap certain things, but remember that when I buy something, it's really designed, I'm really intending to hold it long term. So 10.81%, um, 6234 a month. Let's go through total income. So this is the total dividends I've received throughout the years, 218,000. Total capital gains realized throughout the years, 104,000. So this is realized income, realized capital gains. It's not unrealized, okay? It's not on paper. So my total realized profit, which is basically these two numbers together, is 320, almost $323,000. So that's what you see on the, the thumbnail, right? Because it's realized profit here. And this number here is basically, what is my current value, portfolio value, 654? plus my profit. So this number is kind of like if I sold everything tomorrow, what's my profit? Um, you know, everything together, it would be 977,000, which if you compare it to how much I invested, it's a 41% overall return. So hopefully you understand now what all these numbers mean. It's not really rocket science. Um, and again, if, if ever you're confused, I don't want to get into so much detail here. Check out my portfolio explained video. So yeah, that's basically it, everyone. That is my main cash cow portfolio, I like to call. So I did invest a lot in the last couple of months. Uh, and like I keep saying, I will in keep investing regularly, averaging down and increasing my passive income every single month. That is what this strategy is all about. So keep investing, keep staying passive, and we're going to do th this entire thing again next month. See you then. Hey, don't go yet. I have some important reminders, including some more recent ones, and I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. And for everything that I'm about to discuss, the links and in, in info are in the video description below. So first of all, if you didn't know yet, I do offer a one-on-one -on -one coaching session where you'll have a one-hour Zoom call with me where you could ask me all the questions you want, and I'll help you and assist you best I can. Just remember that I'm not, not a licensed or registered financial advisor or planner. So to book a session, go on my website, PassiveIncomeInvesting.com. And right there on the home page on the left hand side, there is a small video. Watch that video to know how to book a one on one properly with yours truly. Also, on my website, you could purchase my digital product, the Ultimate DIY Investing Package, which is on version four right now. It comes with lifetime updates, so you only have to buy it once. And this is really a reference tool or a companion tool to help you build your own portfolio according to your needs and your objectives. It has lists of funds, it has sample portfolios for both Canadian 
Asian investors and American investors. So make sure to check it out uh, on my website. I actually created a video which uh, shows the product from A to Z because I don't want you to spend money unless you know exactly what you're getting. So make sure to check that video out on my website. And don't take my word for how good it is. Check out the reviews. There's over 300 of them and they are all 100% real reviews. So here's some more um, updated news or recent news. I am now on Blossom, a new investing app designed for investors. I've been using it for a few weeks now. I think it's really, really great. It has a really cool feature where users could actually add and share their portfolios and what they're buying and selling every day. So you could actually link your investing account so it's uh, updated automatically on a daily basis. I recently added my own main portfolio so you could follow how my portfolio is doing live and what I buy every month. Really, really cool. It's like a mix of Facebook and Twitter, but specifically for investing. So get on your phone, click on the link in the video description below and download the app. It's 100% free. So you two could share your portfolio. Just remember to look for me and follow me. My username is Adrian PII altogether. Also, I do have a referral link for Quest Trade. So you could get, you could get $50 uh, worth of free stock purchases. This is the Canadian discount broker that I use and I recommend. Unlike Wealthsimple, the other popular discount broker in Canada, you uh, you could drip everything you want. It has all the stocks and it also has dual currency accounts. Very, very uh, convenient if you're buying both Canadian stocks and American stocks. I have a Quest Trade video, by the way, which shows gives you a little tour uh, of the fe features, so make sure to check that out. I also have a referral link for Passive. This is the portfolio tracking tool that I use to consolidate all our accounts to get a nice bird's eye view so we can cons for, you know, consolidate all the inf information together for easy tracking and stats as well. Also, our Facebook group. Passive Income Investing is now an invite-only private group. So to join it, you need to click, click on, the, on the link in the video description below and give the group a like to get invited. So we take pride in making this one of the best investing Facebook groups out there with over 13,000 members. There's no scams, there's no spammers, and the negative and doomsday people we kick them out right away. Also, follow us on Instagram if you want a little bit more of our personal journey here in Panama. And lastly, just remember everyone, I am not a licensed or registered financial advisor. This channel is all about my personal investing journey and how I invest to generate high passive income from a diversified portfolio of high yield funds. It's for educational purposes only, so don't forget to do your own research and due diligence. And of course, stay safe everyone, stay healthy, and of course, stay passive. See you next time.